Another big interview. The world's biggest stars. On the 947 Top 40 with Zwelly. Powered by CTM. Are you Thank you so much for taking some time out. I know of your busy schedule um, uh, to make some time. We're in Johannesburg, South Africa, by the way. Ah, oh, amazing, amazing. I flew into Joburg a few years ago when I went to a safari. Um, oh, nice. But I've not, I've not been ever since or properly and stuff, but I do love South Africa and I love the people. You guys are just sick and just really cool, chill people. <laughs> We'd love to have you back, by the way. I know the pandemic has slowed things down a little, but uh, it would be great to have you back in South Africa. I would love to come, definitely. Um, it's definitely on the cards, I think, for me to get out there again. Yeah, ah, very nice, very nice. So, look, Ella, I mean, I, I feel personally my journey with you goes way back, a decade ago, in actual fact, when you were on X Factor. And uh, I know you made it close to about the top five, close to the end, and I was really bummed when you got knocked out. Kind of felt bittersweet because James Arthur won in the end and uh, you know I was really happy for him but straight off the bat I mean you had Ghost number one single in the UK after this whirlwind I guess of uh, being on X Factor now that you're in the industry do you think you'd be able to manage you know something like X Factor again and all that pressure day in day out you know of competition <laughs> no I don't know where the confidence came from me as a 16 year old to put myself through that TV show yeah. Um, because I think looking at it now, like 10 years on at 26, like if you said to me now, do you want to go on TV every Saturday and Sunday night and be judged for what you love doing? I would be like, no, thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it is bizarre. I don't know where that kind of element of confidence came from, but it was definitely there at that age. Maybe we were a bit more less fearful of things when we're younger, but, um, yeah. but no, yeah, it was an amazing experience. And like, it's mad that it was 10 years ago. Like some days it feels like yesterday and some days it feels like forever and a million years ago. So yeah, no. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, now congratulations on the release of your So For More album. Yes, you dropped it a couple of weeks ago. Everything I uh, didn't say. Now, you obviously took quite a bit of a gap, I guess, between your debut album and now coming back into this now. And I want you to talk a little bit about the beauty of perspective, I would say, because, you know, you seem like an artist that really wants to experience life, go through things in order to gather, you know, the new material that you're going to record. And now you're a grown woman as opposed to being a teenager. So, you know, how much does that experience help on your side? Well, first off, I want to say to you and to anyone listening that it was so unintentional that I took this long um, <laughs> to get the album together. And I think what I realized is having so much success at a young age, obviously Ghost kind of like went stratospheric and did unbelievable things for me in my life. And mm. I was 18 years old when that went to number one and my first album shot to number one and I was traveling here, there and everywhere. And by the time I got to about 20, 21 years old, I came home and I was about to go into writing for album two. And I just remember sitting there being like, I have nothing relatable to write about. No yeah. one will want to listen to an album of what I've just done because it wasn't normal. As much as it was amazing, it, was, it wasn't it was normal. And you know, my career was popping, but in my personal mm. life, like all my mates had gone to uni, they'd gone to college. Like I was living in London, but I'm from the North of England. So London just didn't feel like home. I was living in this flat. I didn't have a sofa. I didn't have a TV <laughs> set up. Like everything was just, I felt very lost and I didn't really know where home was. And I just wanted to be back with my family, but I knew I couldn't because my work life had to be down here. So I think I needed to take some time for me and figure out, you know, I think it's terrifying anyway the transition of like your hormones at that age from a teenager to like a young woman or a young man is like so so, so scary, scary. So, so yeah i think it was one of the best decisions i ever made of just being like do you know what there is no pressure and i mm. took that pressure away from myself and um i'm glad i did because over the last especially like five or six years i just think i've grown i've evolved i've 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 experienced a lot of life um, and I've seen a lot and and also like overcome personal struggles that I maybe didn't realize I had from a young age that I probably hid and buried in the hatchets for, for a long time and actually mm -hmm. facing them head on and, and actually working through it um, was like a big part of the process for me. And I think I just wanted, I knew when this album was going to be ready that I would know when it's ready and I'd I always promised myself that it's not just about the music it's about me being physically and mentally prepared to do a campaign as well um because that's just as important I think when you experience that much success especially at a young age you know how much it takes of you and you literally give your yourself your soul <laughs> and everything um and I don't want to give any less than that either like um yeah. so I think 
knowing all of that from a young age, I think that's probably how I knew I needed to take a bit of time. But um, but yes, it did take a while. The album is here though. <laughs> the 16 yes. tracks on there and each song's so different. Each song kind of talks you through and walks you through things that have happened along the way in my life over the last eight years. And whether it's love, heartbreak, friendships falling apart, realizing who my real friends are, realizing Ooh. stuff about myself, um, mistakes I've made along the way. And I think the difference, the real difference between this album and my first is that I started opening up a lot next to the piano about stuff to do with myself and and talking about more vulnerable things and you know songs like Ugly and Brave kind of really delve into all of that and they're songs that just really helped me and I wanted to share them with my fans so I was like the more transparent I am the more comfortable I feel and the more I feel like I'm not hiding anything from anyone. Ah, love that, love that. Your answer actually bleeds into my next question because I wanted to say that, you know, there's such a great maturity in your songwriting and it's something that's really just been there from the beginning and I can tell that writing is something that is super close to your heart and I, I just wanted to find out because I'm a words guy, I like writing, maybe not for music because I'm not the best singer, but I um, <laughs> wanted to find out what is your relationship, you know, with songwriting? What is your process? What does Ella Henderson, you know, go through when she's penning down a song? I think it's really interesting because I always, my mum and dad said that when I was a kid, um, from a very young age, I loved and I would always get like little awards or little stickers in, in from being a very young age for, for writing poems and poetry in school. Yeah. Um, so I loved like, I loved making rhymes and making visual stories out of like short verses from a very young age. And I think we always had a piano in the house growing up um, and I was the youngest of four and nobody played an instrument. So I think I just naturally took to the piano and I started teaching myself chords and that with my poetry formed songwriting from a very early age. And it's just always been my safe space. It's been a place where if something's going on and I feel like I can't talk about it to anyone because I'm either too embarrassed or I haven't really quite gathered or come to terms with what it even means, I just yeah, get it out in that way. and. Half the time I go to the piano when I feel a very strong emotion. So whether I'm really angry, really happy, sad, <laughs> that's when I go to write a song. Um, and more so as well, that's normally when I end up writing a song that's you know gonna end up being a single is when I'm feeling something in that moment because it's very real and it's present. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I have needed it. I know a lot of artists and people compare it to therapy, but it, I think without that process of writing music and um, and also I love like over the years, I've obviously met and written with some amazing songwriters and producers and being in a room with other people that are on your wavelength and, and yeah. understand that creative process and the energy it takes. Like, it's just a bond that like, I definitely have with certain people in my life now who I love writing and working with. Like they're friends, but they're like more than friends. They're like a part of my soul. I know it sounds really weird, but like we are like, we're, like we walk into a room and we haven't seen each other for months and all of a sudden I open up like as if they're a therapist and we write a song about it. Like it's, yeah. we don't even do that with our friends when we go to the pub. We just like on the face of it, probably do all the happy jolly stuff. We don't probably get to the nitty gritty stuff. So mm. it is an interesting process. One that I think when you actually dissect it, it's actually really weird <laughs> <laughs> um, and quite strange. Um, but yeah, it's something that I know that I've needed along the way and I think I wanted to obviously bring my fans up to speed on everything that's happened in my life over these last eight years and and mm. here it is here is quite literally everything i didn't say <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it now i was actually listening to the album and one of my favorite records on there is ugly i mean i've got quite a few favorite songs but just want to go through some of the lyrics i'm really hoping it'll be a single but too thin too smart monday don't fit in my jeans stretch marks dark circles under my eyes but no one wants to hear about that now those are the opening lyrics and many people may see you as this flawless pop star you're gorgeous you know you're very <laughs> you can't fool that face <laughs> but you know people will see you as someone who is just perfect and the reality of it all is that here you are you know pouring your soul out and the reality these days is that social media you know plays such a mad role in how young people see themselves and how adults as well you know and how it is that we see ourselves as well and i'm just interested to find out from you you know mental health wise you know and body positivity how important is that you know for you because you have been in this industry for a long time and i can imagine You've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think the most important thing that I want to share and say is that 
even though I stand and sing a song like Ugly and I've written a song like that, that doesn't mean that I've I've got it all together and I've got my shit together. If, if you could have a snapshot of my life on the weekly basis, it is the song Ugly. Like I still have days where I wake up and I feel the worst. And I still have days where I wake up and I feel like, okay, I'm a bad bitch. I've got this, I've got, my, I've got everything. Yes. And I think it's, it's just healthy to know that that's so human. I think I went through life a lot when I was younger where I was, constantly thinking on the face of it, I have to be perfect. I have to smile. I have to um, be this happy person. Everyone has to think of me as this, like, I'm really nice. And 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 it would get on top of me. And, and, and you feel like you had to be unbreakable when actually inside a lot of the time you feel almost broken. And it's like, that's just so unhealthy and not normal. And I love social media for the elements of, you know, we can spread so much love, positivity and empower yes. one another with it, which is what I want to use my platform for, which is why you'll see videos of me laid up in bed with COVID talking about that. And then you'll see a video of me getting ready for a gig that night. Like, oh, not that night, obviously, because I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's. I just think it's important to realize that a lot of what we see is through rose tinted glasses and we need to stop comparing ourselves to other people and trust the timing of your own life because you're on this walk of earth for you, not for somebody else. And you've got to appreciate that, you know, I, I guess a lot of good things do take time and you, you have to put in the hard work in life. So that you, I, I used to constantly see things like happening with artists and stuff when I wanted to be one. And I'd and I'd be like, oh, you know, why isn't that me? And you, you feel like the world's against you and, it, and it's really not. It's like the more you focus on yourself and be present and come off that, the more you actually get stuff done. Um, so I think it's really healthy to have that. And, and with the body positivity and, and all of that, like I just feel as though I am not like your perfect, you know, Polly Pocket pop star. So I am a pure example of the fact that, you know, it's not about that. It's about being you, about feeling comfortable in your own skin, knowing that like flaws, wrinkles, stretch marks, all of these things that for like years and years and years have been seen as these things we've got to get rid of. Like, yeah. like if you want to get rid of them, great. But if you want to embrace them, great. Like there should be no rules. And I just want to kind of shake the stigma of that. And just for like, especially the younger generation coming through, like you have, you know, my niece, she wants to be a TikTok star. Like that's her, one of her dreams. And you know, that's very, very prevalent right now in what in the world we live in. And yeah. it terrifies me, but equally like she has such an awareness at a young age of like how important um, social media is gonna play a role probably in her life. Um, and, and, it, and it does, cause it's a huge part of my life. Like without social media, you know, I can't connect and engage with fans on a personal level, probably the way I'd like to. Um, and it's it's it is it's just a crazy world we live in. But I think if you have the ground tools of of realizing what you're using it for, how you want to use it, and kind of cut cut out all of the stuff that isn't healthy, that's negative, that doesn't feed your soul with goodness. Like I did a lot of that in lockdown. I, I did a lot of clearing out who I was following. I was like, this doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> and and got rid of it all. So so yeah so yeah I'm very proud of a record like Ugly because. It's not about being perfect. It's about the ongoing, you know, walk of life of just trying to be the best version of yourself. And whatever that is, whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Now, while you're working on your latest album, Everything I Didn't Say, you had what I like to call a, a mini dance era. And I was living for that. I mean, you had This Is Real with Jax Jones, We Got Love with Sigala. You had a Nathan Dore record as well. and. I, I'm interested to find out because those records were so much fun. Were you having as much fun recording, performing in front of live audiences as it came across, you know, as it sounded like? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that I figured in the last, because ultimately like my goal in life and one of my dreams was to be a, a singer songwriter. It wasn't just to be a pop star. Like I love writing music. So a lot of these artists that I've ended up collaborating with, I've worked with behind the scenes and written music for them for over the, the last decade. So to eventually be in a place where, you know, a lot of the time my vo my vocals would be on the demo and in the end it'd be like, well, do you want to do it? And I'd be like, <laughs> oh, well, I'm, you know, it's not really my realm. But then once you start doing it, you get like the hook of like, this is a lot of fun. Like 
working yeah. with someone that's completely in a different genre to me it's a different way of performing and it's a different crowd it's a different target audience and I just really enjoy it and I think I've kind of surrendered now to the whole thing of like there is no rules with music anymore like if there's something that feels organic to me um, and I've written a song with a good friend of mine and we both love it and we both want to share this process then I just go with it now um, and yeah, I can't say too much too soon either, but there is a lot more exciting stuff this year on its way. And that's going to be happening alongside my album. And I'm super psyched for that. I get, yeah. you know, really excited to do stuff um, that kind of takes me out of the lane that I sit in with my own music. Ah, very nice. I was actually about to get to, do you have any secrets you can let us in on? But I see you shut it down before I even got there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can say I'm shooting something really exciting. I'm doing a video for something in Barcelona next week and I'm so excited. It's going to be really, really like, fingers crossed it'll be big, but like you will definitely know the artists I'm doing it with. So I'm, I'm very excited for it. Ah, epic, epic. Now, I hear Little Birdie has said that you are a very big Beyonce fan, right? Love Beyonce. <laughs> so you're part of the beehive. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a um, a Beyonce wall in my bedroom growing up. It was just oh, wow. it had Beyonce everywhere, and then yeah. there was, like Amy Winehouse scattered there, and oh. yeah, <laughs> and Alicia Keys. Um, but yeah, huge Beyonce fan. I don't know who isn't. Yeah, so one of our presenters, she does the breakfast show. It's the biggest breakfast show in Joburg. Her name is Anele, and she is part of the Beehive. She considers herself the biggest Beyonce fan in the world. Now, it's been interesting over the past couple of weeks because she's almost turned into an Ella Henderson stan. And what she's been doing is that she's been on a campaign because Brave is on our 947 Top 40. And she has been getting it climbing, climbing further, further up the chart. And... I am happy to tell you that from a Beyonce fan to another one, she has managed to get Brave into the top 10 on the 947 Top 40. So, yeah. hey, Brave is in the top 10. Oh my gosh, that's amazing news. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really amazing. We're hoping we can get it to number one. It would be another number one record for you. But yeah, everyone's going to keep streaming it. We're going to get it to the top of the chart. But look, I don't want to take too much more of your time. But for all your fans in South Africa, we know we'll see you at some point. Do you have any message for, you know, everyone down here who's been supporting the music? Yes, just I love you all and thank you all so, so much for like your ongoing support. And hopefully I can touch down over there very, very soon and see you all and visit all and tour. And yeah, just thank you so much. It's very surreal to me that you all even know who I am. <laughs> so, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's, it's wicked. I, I love you all. Uh, we love you too. Ella, thank you so much for your time and thank you for being so generous as well with your answers. We'll no, keep supporting the team. It really thank means you. a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your weekend. And you, and you. Have a good one. I'll speak to you soon. Cool. Cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs> Yo, hashtag 947 Top 40 CTM.